The Red Sox made a late night move on Sunday, and it was a move that Red Sox fans were beginning to think might not ever happen. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same that when it comes to your vehicle, every part needs to fit just right. This is very fitting for how we're going to start today's episode. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or you get your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. So when you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you will have that confidence to get back in the game in no time at all. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. That might have been the most fitting way to start a show with one of our sponsors, and that is because on Sunday night after the Red Sox lost 9-1 to to the St. Louis Cardinals, Ryan Brazier told the media that he had been designated for assignment. Happy Monday. I am your host, Nessens, Lauren Willand, and little emergency pod for you this morning. Yes, Ryan Brazier, the person who has survived cut after cut, who probably got more chances than he deserved, was DFA'd. And he said that as much as it sucks, he did hold himself accountable. But I think for the last you know year plus, when fans have been looking at who doesn't fit on this team, who is not that right fit for this team, It always was Ryan Brazier, but he was never the one to get cut. And Alex Cora constantly expressed confidence in him. Hyam Bloom expressed confidence in him. The Red Sox just, they seemed like he was going to turn it around or he was on the verge of turning it around. And as much time as they gave him and as many chances as they tried to give Brazier, it just unfortunately never worked out in his favor. So now he has been DFA'd. So either he's going to get claimed by a team or I don't really know if he'll go to Worcester. But after a 729 ERA, 20 appearances for the Red Sox this year, they decided that was enough. And after the 9-1 loss, Brazier spoke to the media and said that this sucks and that he's looking forward to a fresh start. Maybe a new start won't be so bad for him. We will talk about this in Monday's full episode of Locked on Red Sox. This is just a an emergency pod, if you will. But after the game, like I said, Bright Brazier was holding himself accountable and he was the one who broke the news to the media. So the, the Red Sox have not officially announced the move. And once they do, it is, it is expected that Jolie Rodriguez will be activated for the series against the Mariners. Now, we have not seen Jolie Rodriguez all year, so we have no idea if he's going to be any better or any worse than Ryan Brazier. But this is he, he, I'm assuming as long as the game doesn't go as as awful as the last three have for the Red Sox after they got swept by the Cardinals at Fenway Park, that we likely will see him Monday. We're, we're probably going to see him this series against the Mariners, which begins Monday night, but we don't know how he's going to be. We don't, and we're not going to judge any of this all on one, two, three appearances, but we'll talk about all of that more in Monday's full episode, but even before Brazier was DFA'd, we knew that Jolie Rodriguez was very close to coming back to this team starting. He started the season on the injured list, and now he's been making his way back. We knew that this return was imminent, and Ryan Brazier seemed like the obvious choice here to get DFA'd, but as we've seen in the past, you know, we saw Matt Barnes get DFA'd before him. We've seen several other people, even Eric Hosmer, just almost moves that back then didn't seem like it made much sense to get rid of X instead of Ryan Brazier. And I think Red Sox fans were, you know, I I know how they feel about Ryan Brazier. I mean, I've expressed frustration over Ryan Brazier as well, but when he survived so many times, fans probably were like, sure, he makes sense, but why do we have any reason to believe that he will actually be the person to be DFA'd? And he was. So now with, with that move, Chris Sale and Raphael Devers are the only players left on this Red Sox team from the 2018 World Series winning team, which that's just crazy to me to think that that was not that long ago. 
that was, you know, this wasn't 10, this wasn't eight years ago. This was not very long ago. Most of the players are still playing in MLB and only two of them remain on the Red Sox. So baseball is weird, but Brazier's last outing, it was just very ugly. He gave up four hits. He gave up a three-run home run to Nolan Arenado over two and the thirds innings that he pitched. The Red Sox lost nine to one, and he didn't enter the game with the most ideal situation. But again, when you're part of, uh, when you're part of the bullpen, that's your job to try to clean up somebody else's mess, not make your own mess, not make it worse. And maybe the idea going to him was maybe this is his last chance at any sort of redemption. And if that was, it it just, it was not well. So Brazier came into the game in the sixth. St. Louis was already leading four to one. So the game still was within reach and Brennan Bernardino loaded the bases. So n- not ideal, not an ideal situation for Brazier to come into, but there were two outs. So there's a glimmer of hope being like, Okay, one out. That's it. That's it. A line out, a soft dribbler, and just an easy ground ball. Something something simple, right? But no, nothing can ever be simple for the Red Sox team. Nothing can ever be simple for Ryan Brazier. He immediately gave up a two-run single, so that made it 6-1. And even though those runs weren't credited to him, it's still this – is, this isn't why he was in the game. You're in there to clean up Bernardino's mess. And in the eighth, when he came back, he allowed three more runs, which was that home run, and then they took him out. So it was – I guess too little too late, but like I said, after the game, he was holding himself accountable. Obviously, he's not happy about the situation, but he said, honestly, a new start might not be so bad. Obviously, getting to play at Fenway every day is a dream come true. Two parks you want to play at growing up are Yankee Stadium and Fenway, and I got to do both a lot. So I'm grateful. It sucks, obviously, but new start. I walked a few guys early on, some bad luck, a ton of bleeping singles this is what it is I get it it's a business and luck aside I've got to still have results to be at this level and it just didn't work out and it didn't you know who knows what the future holds for him you obviously don't want to see anyone lose their job but when you see somebody who continues to keep their job who's not doing the most or who's doing less than somebody who deserved to keep their job over him it just becomes a a question of What do they see in this guy that seemingly the entire fan base can't get behind? Because when you have an entire fan base, a majority of the fan base saying that this guy is causing more harm to your team than good. Yeah. I mean, obviously they were right. We like Jake and I, we would air out our grievances on Ryan Brazier from time to time on, on the locked on Red Sox podcast. But, but now we don't have to do that. His time with the Red Sox has come to an end. I, I think we have seen the last of Ryan Brazier in a Red Sox uniform, but as bad as this season was and last season, as bad as all of that was, he still was a crucial part to that 2018 Red Sox team. It seems like forever ago at this point, but he posted a 160 ERA. He had a .77 whip. He had 34 regular season outings and he looked good. He looked like a stable part of that bullpen. And then in the postseason, he appeared in nine games. He had a 104 ERA and he recorded five holds and allowed only one run. So you're looking at those numbers from 2018. You're like, no way. Is that the same Ryan Brazier that we've seen this year that we saw last year? He also had that moment with Gary Sanchez in 2018 when he told him to get back in the box. And this was pre-pitch clock. So it was just, it was it fired up the team. He ended up striking out Gary Sanchez. And it was just a big like motivation factor for that team. There's a lot of adrenaline going on. Red Sox Yankees, I felt like was a very good, a lot of fun baseball in 2018. But you look at those numbers and then you look at the 10.8% walk rate this season. And over the last two seasons, he's just really struggled. And He's 35. This isn't like he's 26, 27, this, even 30. You know, you could say that he's he's old for a, an athlete. He's old for an MLB pitcher. And it, I don't know if someone will want to take a flyer on him just because of how inconsistent he was. Or I mean, just downright bad this season at times. And I don't know if there's enough in the tank for someone to give him a second chance. And can you even call it a second chance at this point? Because I feel like he's had so many chances with the Red Sox but if this is the end for Ryan Brazier we still have 2018 and I know a lot of people are celebrating I mean I I must have fallen asleep the second the Red Sox game ended last night the second my head hit the pillow I was out cold so I woke up to the news that Ryan Brazier had been DFA'd and of course you know Red Sox Twitter is celebrating everyone's very excited and you know they're taking their victory lap and that's fine and I think that's 100% acceptable I think that he's he was brought down this team a lot over the last 
season, season and a half in particular. And I think that people have voiced their feelings enough to know that how 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 he is perceived in in Red Sox Nation. But someone still lost their job. It's still unfortunate. You always want to end your career or end your time with any team kind of on your terms. And I mean, he's had plenty of chances. I'm not defending defending him at all. He's had plenty of chances to turn it around and he just couldn't. The game still was winnable. And yes, he's not the reason the Red Sox lost on Sunday. The offense just went completely cold against not the best NL team. So, but I think that with all the the DFAs that he has avoided and all the the roster cuts that he's avoided, he's had chance after chance after chance, and he just could not take advantage of it the way that he should have. And now it's on to the next adventure for Ryan Brazier. It's on to the next adventure for the Red Sox with Jolie Rodriguez. And it's on to the next adventure with Locked on Red Sox. We have a two-episode Monday coming for you today. So this is episode one. We'll have episode two dropping a little later on, recapping the entire weekend series, kind of what went wrong, which was the offense going cold. We had some weird pitch clock violations that I will do my best to try to kind of make sense of Kenley Jansen after securing 400 saves, blew two consecutive saves, and just did not look like the Kenley Jansen from Save 400. But thank you for tuning into this emergency episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. I will be back later today. We have a three-game sweep to unfortunately talk about, a series with the Mariners to look ahead to, and a new pitcher in Jolie Rodriguez to see what he can bring to this Red Sox bullpen. You can find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox and then me, La 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 Lauren, Three Laws, Lauren with four R's. You can also rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Wherever you get your podcast is where you can find Locked On Red Sox. And it's also where you can find all the other shows across the Locked On Network, Locked On Astros, Locked On Yankees, Locked On Cardinals. Everyone does such a great job here bringing you baseball content Monday through Friday through the ups the downs, the good, the bad of a 162 game baseball season. For my everydayers, like I mentioned, this is a two episode Monday. What a great way to start your week, right? Well, you know, we're gonna be talking about the Red Sox getting swept, but that just means more content for us, more content in order to put out there for you. And maybe tomorrow we can talk about a win, the Red Sox getting back on track, getting back in that win column and starting the series on a high note. But until then, listen, Jake's not here anymore, but we're still going to end this show how we always do for the last two years. Keep the faith and let's go Red Sox.